Well, look, we talked to Nick Dawson uh, on his dairy farm near Napier, and I think he gave us an insight uh, into just how long-term the impacts of this are on people, particularly who are producing food and produce uh, for overseas markets and indeed for New Zealand consumers. Um, And the devastation, not just to crops themselves or the land itself, but the blowout of infrastructure and things like bridges means getting goods to market or running farming and agriculture and horticultural enterprises is really hard. And I was talking to people, you know, involved with apples and stuff, and there should be a pick on now, and it's all just a bloody mess. And there's no way at the end of the day that isn't, that isn't going to hit you in the pocket or have an impact on you as a New Zealand consumer at some stage. And to get some idea of what that might look like, um, we're joined now by Raywin Blakely. And Raywin is, of course, the uh, head of Food and Grocery, the Food and Grocery Council, the organisation, uh, the collective sort of umbrella organisation for the people who make, distribute the stuff that's on our supermarket shelves. Uh, Raywin, nice to talk to you again. Good morning. All right. So, as I said, there's no way this isn't going to hit, if you like, our supply chain for food and produce in our supermarkets, is it? We're not going to get off scot-free. That's a fair assessment, Sean. Uh, There's no way this level of utter devastation won't have an effect. But I think it's too early to be able to quantify that really precisely. And I'm really happy to talk to you about what our members are focusing on at the moment and how this might play out over the next few weeks. So, you know, we're a little over a week in and the first concern for members in the affected areas who, as you say, are the suppliers of the food and grocery items into the retailers that our uh, members of the public buy every day. Uh, The first concern would have been to understand the whereabouts and the safety of their people and some of our members did have real concerns and weren't able to locate people and that's that's a horrific situation to be in as an employer. Those people in those affected areas obviously have personal circumstances where their whanau, their own houses may be impacted, so employers have to be mindful of that as they're also doing their own very thorough site and plant assessments now to try and understand the impact on their businesses. At the same time, they're trying to continue what business activity they can and some of them have multiple sites. So some areas of New Zealand haven't been affected at all, so that's business as usual, other than potentially supply chain interruptions. A really big focus for members is their procurement. If they can't get the items they need to manufacture their goods from their usual suppliers, or if they're growers and have that vertical integration where they've been growing their own produce and then uh, turning it into items that we see on supermarket shelves, they need to then look to where else they can get items to substitute. There are some issues around ingredient substitution. They may be dealing with the Ministry of Primary Industries about food safety concerns and about labelling concerns. And I have to say that the Ministry of Primary Industries has been fantastic. We've had daily stand-ups with them about issues and they've been resolving those as quickly as they can. So Mm. that's a really responsive agency to be working with. We've also got, um, you know, obviously product line issues and our... Members will be working out whether they can reduce the, the, the range of products that they make, concentrate on a few that they can make in volume, or whether they have to make new products altogether that fill so, uh, the consumer's needs in a different way. And that's where you'll start to see different products available yeah. on the supermarket shelves. Yeah. Yeah. Raymond, uh, is there anything in particular we can sort of intuitively know is going to be a problem? I was thinking particularly about canned fruit. Yes, look, I think that's a logical thing to think about, but we don't know yet exactly what the impact will be, and some of that depends on how much stock was on hand and Mm. whether we can substitute some of those raw ingredients from other areas. Uh, And there may be different products available in terms of frozen that can be used to manufacture other items. So what we do know about people in, in business and people generally is they, you know, once they get through the immediacy of an issue of a circumstance, they they start to think about what they can do to keep going. Um, But this is a dynamic situation, so they will adapt, they will find ways through it. And I think what we need to be prepared for as consumers is we may not see things in exactly the same way that we are used to on the supermarket shelves, but there will still be product Yeah, but I've got to say, we're still having that impact uh, post-COVID. Yes, absolutely. Try try finding a packet of sesame or wheat crackers at 
at um, you know at New World. If I see them, I buy four yeah. packets because I know I might yeah. not see them for yeah. another two months. You yeah. know. Okay, so that's where they're all going, Sean. You're buying up all the sesame oil wheat crackers. <laughs> okay, so what you're <laughs> saying think, is we're I kind of assessing, but there's no way this doesn't have a flow on into into it, higher it prices. Yeah, it, in it, some look, categories. We, we're already, yeah, we're already in an inflationary environment, and the public know that, and they they unfortunately have seen prices go up and up and up. And the last time I talked to you before these weather yeah. events, um, the last two anyway we were predicting that that was likely to continue to happen. Yeah. And we've got other things, as you know, going on yeah. where we've got difficulties with egg supply, we've got difficulties with carbon dioxide. And hey, how's the other carbon dioxide thing going while I've got you here? Slowly. So we haven't... Um, we've obviously got... Kapuni has um, come back online, but they're doing... They need needed to do some regular maintenance that was scheduled. So we've still got some dire circumstances and we're actually still engaging with government about what we can do on that. Yeah. But it is fair to say that this latest event has really surpassed um, some of those other issues in the meantime. And look, I guess the other thing I want to talk about is just the fact that this is really affecting, as you say, um, on top of COVID, the mental health of leaders and people working in these environments. Mm. When, you've, when you've managed through COVID and managed to get your your goods still manufactured and out the door on difficult um, in difficult circumstances and with the supply chain issues we've had. And the supermarkets have been, you know, able to keep operating and done a great job in that respect. But that cumulative effect of mental health on people cannot be underestimated. And we know our rural communities and our business people are very vulnerable and they've been under a lot of pressure for a long time. Yeah. And I think they really take the the burden of the fact that they're in an inflationary environment and they have to keep putting their prices up, that actually bears very, weighs very heavily on them. And so we are working with um, government about how we can support them with some um, practical mental health support in this area as well because we need our leaders in our industry to be able to get through this yeah. um, in good shape and to be able to make really good decisions for their businesses. None of us make great decisions when we're stressed and when we're not sleeping. So focusing on mental health is something that our organisation is uh, is going to be doing for our members and the wider industry in partnership um, with the Ministry of Primary Industries. And that's that's yeah. something positive that we can do to support our people. Yeah. Hey, Rowan, thank you. And I get the feeling we've got to see how this, how this unfolds uh, in the weeks ahead. It would just be naive to say it's not going to have... Uh, some impact Look, on the supermarket shelves. It's weeks, it's months, it's probably years, mm. and we we need to sort of take a deep breath and accept that. Mm. I think it's easier if you can get your head around that more quickly. That this this isn't going. To, we're never going to return to where we were five years ago. The world has changed permanently in so many ways, and those international pressures and circumstances that we keep talking about are still unpredictable and difficult for us to have any impact on. Mother Earth is another thing that we, you know, we need to look after the planet so that we can do better, but we're going to keep having some of these shocks. So we need to keep ourselves in good shape. And and I think be, you know, understanding that if you can't get your crackers, it's not the end of the world. No, um, I do. Uh, you know, but then my problem is if I can't get my sesame oil crackers, I'm not going to buy the mango Anglo chutney to go on or the cheese to go on top. It's a supply chain. Well, I would, I would encourage, yeah, I would encourage you to tr just try try some different products. And rice see what you, can, the same. what you can. They're, yeah, they're not the same. Rice maybe some, maybe some toasted, toasted sourdough. You know, just be oh, creative and give things a go. Um, if we can take that that attitude with it as we go to the supermarket shelves and just be, you know, like we would be in a foreign country, we're really willing to try different things when we travel. Yeah. We might just have to be a little bit more adventurous and patient in the next few months as we get through this. Hey, Raywin, thank you very much indeed for the, uh, your time and the work you are doing. Uh, good to talk to you again. Raywin Bleakley, the uh, CEO of uh, the Food and Grocery Council, who kind of uh, lobby for and coordinate and work with all the people that provide the stuff that gets on your supermarket shelves. Um, oh, this is a nice email. This has cheered me up. Great show, Sean. Such relevant topics and very informative. Also, great interview by Tina yesterday. It was... And Michael's very informative interviews on local body provincial matters lately as well as all the other topics covered. Platform satisfying large gaps previously unmet and keeping us informed and offering an option for our opinions to be heard. Well done. Thank you, Graham. You are more than welcome, Graham. And we're enjoying doing it. And I think we've had to realise in a time of disaster, and I told you guys last week, don't listen up to us for up-to-date must-have information. That's not what we do. But I think we're pretty good 
at looking over all the trends and things that might interest you and, and getting some really good people on. Um, Luxon back on TV this morning tells Chris Luxon, I'm just saying it's an open invitation, mate, but we're getting quite bored um, with, to be honest, the almost hostile, uh, hostile feeling we get back from your office. I think uh, Luxon's office accused us of mounting a campaign for people to ring in and say you should go on the platform, which is obviously peeving them off. I'm not sure I ever did that. Did I do that, Ben? Did I do that? Did I actually say it? Yeah, look, put your headphones. Yeah, sorry, just fiddling with my headphones. Um, well, I got a text from someone saying that uh, a bunch of people had rung in uh, or had emailed them in, so it's possible. I w- I'd say it wouldn't be out of character, Sean, for you to do that. But okay, I but what I'm saying, do not ring or contact Chris Luxon's office saying you should come on the platform. Please, please don't do that. Because they're, that should, that they're, they're it, yeah. quite busy figuring out where to backtrack and how woke they can be. And they don't need us and no, they don't need a pesky journalist like me and, and or you suggesting as platform listeners that you have a right to hear from the Leader of the Opposition. Heaven forfend, I should suggest that.